Hey guys, Mr. Cheese Gaming here, and welcome back to more of Let's Play Pokemon Platinum. Last time we got here to Eternal City, did some exploring, and met a really, really cool trainer. Actually, one of my favorite characters in the series, Cynthia. In this part, we're gonna fart gun deep. Yeah, fart. <laughs> Why do I keep slurring my words? We're going to fight Gardenia at her gym. Eterna City Gym. This gym's layout is actually different in Diamond and Pearl. And Diamond and Pearl is more of a grass maze where you have to fight all the trainers. But in this area, it's much more cool. How's it going, champ to be? Actually, that's what I said to some boy who zipped in here earlier, too. Gym leader Gardenia is a user of grass type Pokemon. It should be obvious, but grass type Pokemon really hate fire. Huge disadvantage against flying type 2. Oh, wait a second, I should tell you about the gym itself first. You can't challenge the gym leader until you beat all the gym's trainers. It's a bit challenging, but I think of it as a good training and just go for it. I recommend fighting all the gym trainers anyways, and thankfully, Monferno is at a huge type advantage. Just go for it, or I have to talk to you. Welcome, without further ado, let's go! First up is Caroline with her Cherubi. Needless to say, Let's just go for it. Should quickly knock this out or not? Okay. Leech Seed basically saps a little bit of health from us every turn. I remember in my Pokemon Red Let's Play where I actually managed to take down uh, take down the champion using Leech Seed. That was hilarious, but anyways. Roselia, I'm worried that it might have poison type because I think that Budu has poison type. It don't matter because I got a critical hit anyways. Now that's the thing, advantage of the clock will turn now. This is Sim's floral clock. You can walk on its hands. That's how you get to the next trainer. Now, is that not cool? So cool. Gonna go to not three thirty. Um, six fifteen. Yep. Anyways, as I was, anyways, I was saying, there you can see that there's a huge advantage to having only one main Pokemon on your team is that they level up very, very, very fast. However, it's a bad situation if you're at a type disadvantage because that can really mess you over if all your other Pokemon are weak. Anyways, do a little hop. That's cute. My grass type Pokemon can dole out some serious special attacks. I won't let you win easily. Water sport actually weakens fire type moves. Uh, 
Probably not a bad idea to do that. Yeah, I'm not holding back. I believe you paralyzed me. Quicklaw is the best, and that means that paralysis didn't kick in and prevent me from moving. More beautiful a flower, the faster it withers. Every time you beat a trainer, the floral clock moves. The fountain also stops if I lose. So you can go to the Pokemon Center during your challenge. Thank you! Yeah. That way you're not trapped in the gym. Fountain's water level drop. It's possible to walk across the fountain now. I don't know why that would stop Lucas anyways, but okay. Maybe he's just a goody-goody who likes to follow the rules. Oh my... Oh my gosh! The Pokemon Center is so far away! I mean, okay, it's not really that far, but it feels that far. Alright, I'm back. Time to hop to the other side and... Why didn't I hop? Oh, it's because the leaf was on top of it, so I just walked on top of the leaf. Alright. You can't win when you're distracted by the lovely aromas of Pokemon! Only one Pokemon, though? Again? Well, they said it's paral to be paralyzed and poisoned. Well, I yeah, wouldn't speak so soon. Because with poison, I would take damage every turn. Just like your inability to conceal your abundant skill. The floor clock moves, and time flows. There's only our gym leader left. Go on, don't be afraid. Twelve forty-five. Or is he 11.45? I wouldn't know. It's possible to walk across the fountain now. One more trip to the Pokemon Center. When you are ready, talk to Gardenia. You kept me waiting. I'm Gar Eterna's gym leader, Gardenia, the grass-type master. When I first saw you, I was convinced you'd find your way to me. My hunch was right on the money. You have a winny aura about you. So anyway, this will be fun. Let's have our battle. You are challenged by Leader Gardenia. Interestingly, she starts off with a church wig. I would have thought that it would she would evolve into Grotto and, and get that um, dual ground type, which would actually m place me at a type disadvantage. But thankfully, she did not do that. Anyways, strong physical defense, but weak special defense. Let's go in for the Ember. Quick Law is the best. I'm stealing that from Luca Jin. Thank you, Luca Jin, for giving us that catchphrase. Raises this team's defense. I believe it raises the physical defense and not the special defense. So keep using Ember. J. 
Cherim is interesting. It, uh, as you notice, that Cherim has a completely different sprite than other Cherim. Basically, Cherim changes his form depending on if it's daytime, nighttime, or if it's inside a building. And, well, since this battle is taking place inside a building, different looking Cherim. Safeguard. Basically makes it immune to um, status infliction, so I won't be able to burn it with Ember. Not that it will matter, because I would have taken it out the next term anyways. And her final Pokemon, Rose Raid. It's not the end yet. We'll see about that. Magical Leaf. A grass type attack that always hits. Not really gonna do much. And I'm gonna do more damage to you anyways. And the Reflect wore off, which means Flame Wheel would definitely be better. Already down! Let's see. Attack, special attack. Good. Amazing. You're very good, aren't you? I might have said it before, but you're really tough. Wasn't it hard for you to raise your Pokemon to be so good? Not really. I only use one. Don't worry, we'll get our second real party member soon, and sorry, p -Doof. Sorry. I feel so guilty catching you and using Scratch against you to make you injured and make it easier to catch you and just making you do all the slave work and not ever getting paid in EXP. I, I'm sorry, p -Doof. Guess that measures... That's a measure of how much you love your Pokemon. I'm sorry, Bidoof. In recognition of that, I proudly grant you this. With the Forest Badge, your Pokemon can use the hidden move cut outside of battle. Now that you have two Gym Badges, all Pokemon you receive in trades will obey you up to level 30. Yeah, Pokemon that you receive in trade will not obey you until you get this gym badge. I've also got something else. It's a gift from me. Contains the move Grass Knot. It's one of my favorite moves. The heavier the foe, the more damage this move will cause. Uh, there's no way to change the clock, but changing it to 1230 is okay nonetheless. Yep. If there's one thing I can tell about you, it's this. You and your Pokemon are gonna get tougher, and I mean seriously. Hop. And a run. You beat in the gym leader. Your Pokemon look much tougher than they when they went in, too. Well, yeah, I got a few levels. At least that's how I see it. Alrighty. There is one thing that I want to do before I close off this video. Actually, an entire area to explore that is now unlocked now that we have cut. I'm actually wondering if I should wait until nighttime to do this, but no, nah, I think I'll do it now. One other thing that I'm going to do now is go ahead and teach Cut to Bidoof. To Escaped, rather. Gotta call you by your nickname. With that gym badge, we can now use the use it outside of battle. Now, first up, there are quite a few things we can do now that we have Cut. Namely... The rest of Route 205 is finally opened up. Again, there should be a hidden item there. It kind of bothers me that there's nothing there, but anyways. 
technically we're near Eternos Forest, but not in Eternos Forest. So I don't know why it's necessary to put up that um, route location indicator. But anyways, you go over here and take a look at all these berries. Two orange berries. A cherry berry. Two block berries. And two raspberries. You know, I actually never understood what was the difference between real raspberries and um, blackberries. Because blackberries look so much like just regular raspberries and they taste very similar as well. But nope, they're different. Different size, different shape. Oh, your clothing accessories, I got something for you. Got a big tree. Alright. There's a honey tree if you ever want to use it and that's the way to the south side. Now we go to this. Go to this trench. Over here, silver powder. Ah, I want to say that increases the power of normal type moves. Bug type moves, never mind. Kind of lack of indication of what that does. And sleep talk. This allows you to use moves. This will randomly select a move to use even when you're asleep. Great move to have, especially if you catch a Munchlax or a Snorlax because they can use rest and then still be able to hit and then they and then they can get hurt and they can use rest again and man, sleep talk is just a good move. I don't think that sleep talk allows you to use rest multiple times, but and it can select itself, so you're kind of limited to just two other, two moveset if you have that in combination with Rest, but anyways, at, why did I move back? Because there's another area that I wanted to explore. Oh, she is here during the daytime. I thought she only appeared here at night, but let's talk to her. Hiya! You were intrigued by the rumors going around too? You know, people's been talking about the ghost Pokemon of the old chateau. I've been hearing rumors about sinister shadows too. I should check it out myself, but going there is... Well, you know, being that I'm a gym leader, I'm always busy. So since I'm so busy, I can't go in. It's not because I'm scared. So, good luck with your investigation. Let's once again use cut outside of battle. Ton of grass that we can obtain out here. Obtain? No, we're not obtaining grass, just walking through it. Looks like this lawn has not been mowed in a long time. Well, if we go over here... Okay, must be the other side. Baneary! Still don't know how to feel about your evolution, but anyways. Should be here. R really? Outside wall, right side. Anyways, we find an ether there. Why is the encounter rate so high? Mm. 
Ah, uh, there it is. Not the wall of the rock, not of the ground, not the the cliff face, not the wall of the building. The power of the defeated giants infuses this plate. Insect plate basically empowers, increases the power of bug type moves. This is a bit too much. Yeah. And on top of that, every tile is going to be an encounter tile once we go inside, so... Fine, I'll use the repel. And I'll go over the items that you can find inside. Because I don't believe there are any new Pokemon here. If they are, I will go over them right now. Anyways. It appears as if it is glaring. You seem a bit pale. Goes right through the wall. But we can obtain a rare candy here in the kitchen. Can't read that sign for some reason. Check these boxes. You can obtain honey. Always creep me out with that um butler there. As you can see, his legs did not move, so and he was somewhat pale, more pale than most sprites in the game, so you can tell that well it's not exactly amongst the living. Do I have any other type of repels? No. No super repels? Oh well. Gotta really conserve my steps then. Now if we go up here. Signature item of this area, old gato. Only I don't old gato in the entire game, all it does is remove the static effect of Status condition of one Pokemon, and that's it. Not here. A little girl whose feet also don't move. Also, see that picture up there? When we get near it? Some eyes start to glow inside it. If you have Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald in your dual slot, you can catch Gengar here, so you don't have to buy so you can completely bypass the terrible and ghastlies and haunters and well and also you don't have to trade. You can catch Gengar right here, right now if you have them. And chances are if you're an older veteran player like I am, chances are you probably have one of those cartridges hiding around in your house. But anyways, you saw that girl was investigating, or rather, ghost girl, was investigating this. TM90, Substitute. Sacrifice. What this move does is that it sacrifices half of your health, well actually a quarter of your health, in order to create a doll, and that doll would take hits for you. However, if that doll receives damage equivalent to one quarter of your health, well, that doll will be destroyed. Now you see this television here. This TV has an oddly malevolent feel. It's as if it is staring. Perhaps we should visit this a later time. Well, at least I know where the exit is. 
This is the last item to obtain. The Dreadplate increases the power of Ghost-type moves. Two beings of time and space set free from the original one. I believe you have to come here during evenings and, or and check that television for the special event that happens there. And I'm going to run into a whole bunch of ghastlies on my way out, aren't I? Or not! Okay, I forgot that event only happens at night. Oh. Oh! Oh! Encounter, like, a bajillion Pokemon coming in. But you don't attack me now. I see how it is. <sighs> oh, boy. Well... Anyways, I think that's it for this part. Next time on Let's Play Pokemon Platinum, we're going to finish things up here in Eterna City and see what's going on with the uh, Galactic Building. If you like this video, hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe and leave behind a comment. I'll see you guys next time.